Okay, I've got a question. What does a hard-to-find toy, an oversized wreath, and the width of a vagrant have in common? Well, somehow, believe it or not, they are all key plot points in 2008's The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. We've got a lot to talk about, Jennifer. We do, Josh, and we'll unwrap it all on this episode of Do You Watch What I Watch? Well, we posed a question. You know, we said, of all the Hallmark movies that are out there, which ones should we be taking a look at? And we had so many, so many, so many responses gushing about this particular movie we are reviewing and recapping on this episode of Do You Watch What I Watch? We have never seen it, if you can believe. We have never seen the most wonderful time of the year. And so we are ready to get into it to tell you the gold, the coal, and whether we think it's worth the watch, Jennifer. Let's get started. Here's the plot summary for Hallmark's 2008 movie, The Most Wonderful Time of the Year. Corporate analyst and single mom Jen, love that name, tackles Christmas with a business-like approach until her uncle arrives with a handsome stranger in tow. Let's get to it. We open to Andy Williams belting out how it's the most wonderful time of the year. They spared no budge on this intro. Love to see it. So it's a panning shot of a well-decorated street. It looks holly and jolly, except for one house on the end. They have no Christmas lights. We go inside. We meet single mom Jen and her adorable son, who's an old soul, Brian. And he's crafting his letter to Santa Claus, but it's worded more like a business contract. <laughs> so clearly he's influenced by her, like, straight lace type A personality. He wants one toy and only one toy this season. And it is the rocket wheel. Da, da, da. He jokes that Uncle Ralph will get him everything else on his list per the usual. Turns out Uncle Ralph is Henry Winkler, the Fonz. Hello. And he's coming to spend Christmas with them. And it will be his first holiday since he lost his wife, which is sad. So now, Jen, she's not necessarily a Scrooge, but she does go to bed that night saying, I can't wait for Christmas to be over. What were your initial reactions to this opening sequence? You know, I thought the opening credits maybe were this much too long for me. It just kept going on and on. I was like, we get it. We're in a cul-de-sac. Let's show something else. But, you know, this is 2008. This is before these movies really became the mainstream. And so I think there is sort of this old school thing happening with this particular one. But loved the kid. Really liked this Jen character. It was clear. And this is Brooke Burns, by the way. You know? Yeah. Obviously, big deal actress as well. Mm -hmm. And so I really liked this character out of the gate. Because you could see she wants to be a good mom. And she wants to support her son. And sort of do all the things. But she sort of is, you know, career-minded single mom. And this is just another one of those lengthy to-do lists at this time of the year. So I bought it. What about you? Right. I agree. I I wondered why she wanted Christmas to be over. I thought she was going to be more negative than she turned out being, but you're right. It was just more of, I got to check the boxes and go, go, go. So anyways. All right. Next, we meet Uncle Ralph in a New York City bar talking with a very thick accent to his buddies like Benny. Of course, one guy's named Benny. And most of them are police officers in New York City. And turns out Uncle Ralph is recently retired. Sounds like it was not his idea, but he still got it as it goes. He leaves the bar and a guy tries to rob him and steal the robot that he bought for Brian that he had been showing off at the bar. Attempted robbery on the Fonz? Not on my watch, I wrote. So he pins the guy to the ground <laughs> and tells the other current cops, book him, before he sassily walks off into the night. And Uncle Ralph is a spit fire. <laughs> I can't believe it. The man has gravitas, and I just love the way that they wrote this man's character throughout the entire thing. He's tough as yeah. nails, but with a heart of gold, and we'll hear all about yes. that as we go. Yeah, it could have very much gone, like, too hard, and, you know, I've seen too much hardened on the Christmas thing, but no, he's a big old teddy bear. Jen asks her assistant to help her snag the rocket wheel, which turns out it's the hottest toy of the year. Of course it is. She puts everyone on the hunt to snag one. Maybe my stuffy boyfriend can help me because he, you know, has he's well connected. And of course, we're not supposed to like stuffy boyfriend. 
Jen's mom, we find out then, chooses to go to the beach instead of coming to stay with her and to meet the boyfriend's parents. She's like, deuces, I was here at Thanksgiving. I don't need to come back at Christmas. We do not see mom. We just hear that she's just a little flighty. So, whoopsie doodle. The problem is, mom was supposed to help Jen make the Christmas turkey for the Christmas Day event extravaganza. So then we get her frantically figuring out, okay, I got to make the turkey. What am I going to do? We get a turkey prep montage, which I thought was very funny and not something we've gotten. It was like her going through all these cooking books because it was still 2008 and not as much Etsy usage, I guess, back then. Mm. Anyways, she's going through the cookbooks. You hear all these voices in her head. This is what you got to do to make the best dressing. This is what you got to do to make the best turkey. Blah, 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 blah. And it actually was super relatable to me because that's me trying to decipher the best way to cook anything. And every source has wildly varying opinions. And they all have some, you know, tale that you have to scroll past to get to the meat and bones of it. What did you think? You love a baking montage, Josh. What about a turkey prep montage? I really love this because I think they were smart to do this with this character. Because what they did in this moment, and you said it, they made her relatable. Because otherwise she could have come off as frosty and career driven. But we get to see her actually be relatable and real. And I thought they were really smart to do this this early into this movie. Yeah, I thought it was hilarious. So then Jen goes trotting around town, still trying to track down the rocket wheel, which I guess was like a scooter bike situation. Yeah. I don't know why it was special. Yeah, Yeah. I didn't get it, but whatever. She sees local toy store. They got them. There's one in the window. Come on in for the rocket wheel. She traces in, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's just the display. I can't sell you the display, but I use that as a bait and switch to get people in the store. But if you want, you can order one, and it'll be here in January. No, nobody wants that toy store, Scrooge. So she's, because she's a businesswoman, negotiates, I will pay for it now. I will come pick it up at 11.59 Christmas Eve. You can have it on display all season, then I'll get it. Boom, bang, boom. Merry Christmas to all. And he's like, okay. We get to Uncle Ralph's at JFK, ready to go to Chicago to see Jen. Now, he hasn't flown in a while, right? He's a little out of practice. He meets a rough around the edges guy, Morgan, and the dynamic duo scheme their way past busy lines because they were kind of late checking in, and they land first class on their flight together. They form a bond and chitter-chatter about life on the plane over champagne and hot towels, and Morgan is trying to get to Denver to convince his old girlfriend to open a new restaurant question mark what does she have money or it's i don't know morgan's all over the place okay he's like that song i've been everywhere man like he's he's been all over the world he's done all these different occupations he's pretty much a peter pan of it all can't commit doesn't stay grounded very long ever so i'm having trouble believing any of what he's saying at this point but he's still very charming i was like is this guy for real i don't know Uncle Ralph then tells him about Jen's boyfriend who wears $800 shoes that he's super offended by. He doesn't like Jen's boyfriend, doesn't trust him because of the shoes. You can't trust a guy because of that. What did you think about Morgan? I liked Morgan from Go. I liked that he was sort of this free-spirited character, and he was the guy that sort of stepped up to help Uncle Ralph when Uncle Ralph was kind of clueless in the airport. You know, obviously there is some mystery to him. There are There is this sort of, who is this Yehu who is so outside the norm and that kind of thing. But I could see what they were doing here in terms of teeing up the relationship. And by the way, dear listener, please remember this thing was made in 2008. And so when they are giving you 2008 aviation, it is every bit of what you wish aviation could look like. I mean, from first class to the the amenities to the flight attendants being kind and courteous and the whole night this ain't southwest this ain't no airlines no Mm -mm. no 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 this was bougie to the max so i i would have loved it too okay so it was around this time well i don't know about you but i had recorded it in july during christmas in july sometimes so i was watching and i got a commercial to donate to help starving animals who are shivering out in the cold snowy tundra while Carrie Underwood belts n- the first Noel. And I was unprepared for this type of manipulation in the middle of the summer. And it aired twice, actually. Did That's not like it. Did not approve of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anywho, Jen and her son leave to pick up Uncle Ralph from the airport. And her wreath falls off the front door, which is a bit... You have somebody in the background of your shot. Do you know that? Always. <laughs> Molly, 
special guest time. My daughter Molly watched this one. Molly, what were your impressions? Did you like this movie? I don't know. <laughs> Hot takes. Did you like it or not? I did. You did. What was your favorite part? My favorite part was... Actually, you don't know what my favorite part was. It's hard to pick. Hard to there pick you one. Have it. All right. Hot well, takes with Molly. Okay, so Jen and her son leave to pick up Uncle Ralph from the airport, and kaboom, her wreath falls off the front door, which is a bit that continues throughout the movie, which I thought was very funny, because it's this humongous wreath, and there's a whole thing, is the wreath too heavy, or is the hook too small? I actually did this last year. I got one of, like, the Costco flocked live wreaths, and my hook was very insufficient to support it, so I had to buy another hook for said wreath. So I thought it was funny. It's kind of just a running gag. We see nosy neighbor Rita, and she reminds Jen that they're trying to get everyone in the neighborhood to participate with putting white lights on their house, and you're the only one that hasn't joined in on the fun. And Jen has no time for Rita. She mutters, this is left and right to Rita under her breath, and it's very hilarious to me. At the airport, Morgan learns that his flight has been canceled to Denver because it snowed in for days. And so he has to sleep at the airport for an undiscernible amount of time. And Uncle Ralph's like, we can't have that. We can't. Come on, Jen. We can't let him do that. So he meets Jen and Brian. He knew he spotted him from a mile away because Uncle Ralph, of course, was showing a printed photo of them when they were bonding in first class earlier. So it's kind of a forced meet cute. And Jen begrudgingly says, okay, he can stay one night. One night only. Josh, um, what did you think of their first interaction? I thought it was realistic in terms of her reaction to the whole thing. I mean, who is this guy? And you want Yeah, to you don't know him. You don't know yeah. him. You just met him. Anyway, but I guess that they really wanted you to know that Jen had this relationship with her uncle where you get the sense that he has probably pulled this this kind of a shenanigan with her in the past as well. Like Mm-hmm. He's very much. He's a wild card. Of the rela- He's a wild card. Well set. Yes. And I think that's ultimately why she went along with it. But also he's like, I'm a cop. I got a good judge of character. I smelled him. He's fine. Like, uh, come I on. smelled him. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Morgan is dressed like he travels trains for a living. So he's a very vagabond, like Bears. boxcar children vibe. I had to laugh. Um, he may life. as well have had permanent soot on his face. Like, it's the whole thing. <laughs> I had to laugh because he had this tiny little Jansport backpack that he toted around, and he told her at one point, everything I've got is in this bag. And I was like, really, <laughs> sir? That's why sir. I thought he was a serial killer. I was like, no, no, that's just where his like machete is or something. Like That's how he's going to murder them. Okay, so back at the house, Jen is like, okay, i got to get Reed off my back. Hires a door-to-door guy to hang her lights. Says the garage is open, go for it. Well, Morgan and Uncle Ralph catch him stealing from her garage in broad daylight, loading up his van. They go bust him as like a little, you know, what's like a police duo? Not Cagney and Lacey. I don't know. Police duo time. (laughs) And they trap him in his van until the cops show up. So this is take down two for Uncle Ralph in the movie. Because you can have your Christmas fluff, but don't forget, bad guys still exist. I know. Gotta watch out for them. But good thing Uncle Ralph is keeping an eye out. Thank heaven. So Morgan's like, I'll hang the lights. He nearly falls off the ladder because he's hanging them near a window that Jen had just come out of the shower. She had a towel. She screams. He nearly flings back. It's a whole comedic timing bit. And then Jen's expensive shoot boyfriend comes over. And clearly, we don't like him. He just talks on the phone the whole time. Uncle Ralph doesn't like him. And it's AC. And they introduce Morgan as just the light guy. Whoops. (laughs) Like, you might want to go into more detail, but okay. So the boys are going to decorate the inside of the house now, and the nerve of it all, well, you know it, Jen has a shiny silver fake tree, which in Hallmark world is basically like you have a rap sheet. I mean, how dare you? The gall of it. Yeah. Unless it's a balsam hill, then they're okay with a fake tree. But in 2008, I don't know if they were working with balsam hill. Probably not. And it was not a balsam hill. This thing was trash, is what it was. It was in this sad cardboard box. It just looked really mangy. It was really puny. Yeah, so they're appalled. So they go down the street. They get a real tree. Morgan buys the tree. Jen's like, hey, 
Real trees drop needles and sap. What are you doing? But Morgan makes them lunch because he's a chef. And I'm beginning to think the real love story here is betwixt Uncle Ralph and Morgan because Uncle Ralph is obsessed with this guy. For real. Jen's like, okay, hey, Morgan, can you go to the local shop to get a turkey with me? And they banter and he compliments how she can wear hats. Not every girl can wear hats. And I was like, okay, we're starting to flirt. I can get behind it. Back at home, she throws away her mail without even opening at night. And he's like, what are you doing? She just throws away the Christmas cards that she sent. Stacks of them. She's like, I know who they're from. I don't need to open them. Jen, Christmas cards are expensive to send out. Yeah. Somebody spent money on you and you just threw it away. Chuck, chuck, chuck. Yeah. So sad. Cannot believe it. So... Um, Crazy neighbor comes over, Rita, and she points out that one of Jen's exterior bulbs is red instead of white. And Morgan jumps in with some lie, because he's a liar a lot of times, about how it's a tradition somewhere he makes up. Turns out he just wanted to drive Rita insane by having one red bulb. And Jen's like, oh, that's like, <laughs> that's an intro to my heart. That's yeah. who owns up for you. <laughs> yeah, suddenly Jen is very interested in Morgan. <laughs> yes, which is a weird turn of events. So here we are. Morgan has a heart to heart with her and tells her she's doing Christmas all wrong. It's too stressed. You're too, everybody gets too angry. And she's like, Look, bro, you're staying at my house for free. Stop being inappropriate and rude, which I kind of appreciate she called him out. They did not have that kind of level of, you know, relationship foundation for him to give her the business about this, even if he's right. Um, Uncle Ralph was showing Jen the weather every day. Uh, Denver. Still nobody's getting anywhere. And she finally figures out Uncle Ralph is sneaky snake. He had DVR'd the weather report of the one day that the Denver airport was shut down. He just kept showing it to her every day in the den. Because he wanted Morgan to get to stay. <laughs> and really, Denver's wide open. You can get to Denver anytime you want now. <laughs> she's like, she's wearing the same dress and saying the exact same thing she said yesterday. <laughs> Morgan overhears her saying, this guy's got to go. We need our Christmas back and our family back. Okay. Morgan's like, got it. Take me to the airport. She takes him to the airport. He has lost his passport. And of course, he has no driver's license because he hasn't had one since he's 18 because he's such a vagabond, you know, free spirit guy. And then she's like, okay, we'll figure this out. Just come back. Oh, no, it's Christmas Eve at noon in the toy store. I was supposed to pick up the Rocket Thousand. What was it called? Rocket Mike, Rocket, Rocket Tan. I don't know. Something. <laughs> they get there. Toy stores closed. She missed her opportunity to get the bike. Morgan's like, I got this. He trips the alarm at the toy store. They Well, first they called the Scrooge owner, and he's like, yeah, lady, I'm already, it's Christmas. I don't like Christmas anyways, but I'm not showing back up. Sorry. They trip the alarm. They go hide in an alley, and then the toy store owner shows up. They kind of encounter him on the street. They're like, hey, go ahead. Lily has the bike since you're here because, you know, there was a break-in or whatever. They get into a fight behind the store, and Morgan wallops this guy in the face with a trash can and knocks him out. Which is shocking. It was a... <laughs> you think? It was a brief moment of peril. It was certainly a B-mop, but <laughs> your girl Jen is suddenly even more smitten kitten about it because <laughs> Morgan... She may as well have, like, cartoon hearts all around. She's <laughs> like, oh, he hate makes my neighbors hate me and he knocks out people on Christmas Eve and leaves them there with concussions, potentially. Yeah. Have a holly jolly Christmas is what I wrote. Yeah. So here we are. Uncle Ralph turns out had swiped the passport because he's trying to get these two bloodbirds together because <laughs> he's like Cupid. He gives her his gift early and it's a pair of earrings that were her aunt's and it's a very sweet moment. He misses his wife. Everything is a memory and makes him miss her more this season, which is relatable. Morgan appreciates Jen for letting him crash and wishes she didn't have to go to Stuffy Boyfriend's parents' house on Christmas Eve. But she gets all dressed up, goes over there, and right away the Stuffy Boyfriend's mom bashes the aunt's earrings and called them vintage with a bad tone like oh they're vintage oh. the guys are hanging out at christmas eve at the house they're having a holly jolly time jen's bored out of her mind at the parents party and then the boyfriend asks jen to marry him out of nowhere in front of all these stuffy people who were not even talking to her now he's a jeweler so it's not like it was a big ask for him to get her hands on a ring you know she chokes on her champagne Puts the ring on, but never says yes. 
which I think is telling. They get home and boyfriend tells Morgan they're engaged now and it would be awkward if he's still there and that he'll put him up at any hotel he wants until he can fly out of town. Morgan's like, you don't need to do that. I'll just sleep at the airport. Here's an envelope. I'm going to leave this note for Jen on the counter. Boyfriend swipes it, puts it in his pocket so she doesn't see it because boyfriend's a little jelly. We don't like it. Not a good look. Now, should she be flirting with another guy while she's got a boyfriend? Also not a good look, but you know. Okay. It's Christmas. Morgan's gone out of nowhere. They're concerned. They're all sad. He left his ring for Brian, the son. Yeah. Because they had talked about it earlier. You'll grow into it someday. Okay. That's random. Jen's peed. I, the nerve of him. He stayed with me for free and then he just leaves without saying goodbye. Because obviously she misses him. Future in-laws arrive because it's Christmas Day. She's made this turkey because he told her how to make the turkey because I guess he's a chef. And Brian, the um, kid, finds the envelope that Morgan had left by mistake. And Jen and boyfriend go outside and... And they fight, and she's like, what are you doing proposing to me in front of all these people? Blah, blah, blah. And watching Uncle Ralph try to make small talk with the future in-law parents is, like, the definite highlight of the movie for me. He's like, oh, you like shiny shoes, too. (laughs) Like, he was trying, but obviously he doesn't like these people, and they don't know what to do with him. And Uncle Ralph likes chaos and mess, so he encourages Jen to go find Morgan at the airport. Oh, because Jen and the boyfriend break up, by the way. Engage is off. They're done. They storm out. He's like, go find him at the airport. Bring him home. So she's pleading with the security agent to let her back there because it's a post 9 11 world, right? So she wants to get back to chase him down at the gate. She accidentally leans on the speakers and everything she's saying, she's spilling her guts. It's going out to the entire airport. And. She has this whole diatribe about how he knows how to do Christmas. <laughs> That's why I need him in my life. Keep in mind, Christmas is over in just a few hours. So I would want more than a relationship from that. Okay. Morgan in the entire airport here. He runs to her. She thinks he's already boarded. They're chasing each other. It's a whole thing. And then he yells her name in like slow motion. Like, Jen! it was a weird choice cinematically but okay they embrace they go home turkey's done looks delicious it's the most wonderful time of the year swells and they all embrace and uncle ralph says now it's a holiday as the wreath falls off the front door once more okay it is time for our gold or coal segment this is where we break it down where we tell you the bottom line we're each going to give three gifts if there's more gold in the total we're going to call it a toothsome turkey. And if there's more coal, we're going to call it a terrible turkey. And if it's a tie three to three, we're just going to call it a meh, re-Christmas, much to discuss. Jennifer, hit me with your first gift. Yeah, I made this the golden coal because this turkey was basically like another actor. It was a main character. character. They talked about this turkey way more than I even mentioned in this movie. Okay, so my first piece of gold has to go to Uncle Ralph Henry Winkler. I mean, Probably the best portrayal of what is typically like a B character, but he was really an A character in the movie. And he was endearing. He was hilarious. He was effortless. Just he's the uncle that you all, if you don't have him, you want one like that in your family and in your life. He's in her corner, but he also calls her out on her business. And he's telling Morgan at one point, like, she's a weirdo. Like, he keeps it real. And I was obsessed with this character. I wish he did more of these movies, but alas... Not so much, but still loved him. Gold, gold, gold. Gold for me out of the gate, too. I loved the chemistry between Jen and Morgan. I bought it. I thought it was genuine. I thought that he was so different than her, but in this endearing way. And she was really uptight, but also in an endearing way. And they met in the middle on their endearing territory. And it was fun to see them in the middle of the movie kind of start to play back and forth with each other. I thought Mm -hmm. the way they wrote some of this banter back and forth between the two of them was really, really nice. So gold for me. I agree. Um, I would say gold for me is this movie had several moments that made me legitimately laugh out loud. Uncle Ralph probably the most, but also, I mean, the other characters, they gave him a lot to work with and... Like we said, with the banter, they're calling each other out on their shenanigans. 
I thought it was very funny, and I don't always get that in these movies. Sometimes it's way more sincere than that. We don't have time for the LOLs. But I had gold for the LOLs. Great. More gold for me. I thought the pacing of this movie is probably the best I've ever seen in one of these, honestly. Whoa. Felt, felt like the plot moved at the right time. Felt like things developed at the right time. The conversations happened at the right time. There was the oopsie doodle at the right time for me. I just felt like the whole thing was really thoughtfully put together. So gold for me. I'm going to round out my gifts for this movie with another gold. I definitely judged this movie by the artwork for years. I have DVR'd it every year because I've always heard it's so good and I've never pulled the trigger because I'm like, it looks really bad. Like in the artwork, they look angelic. Like it's like they have halos around them. And I was like, is it an angel movie? I didn't think so. But I wasn't really always in the mood for an angel vibe movie because that's a specific, like, you got to sit down for that kind of thing. So glad we watched it because it gave me, it checked all the boxes. I mean, it gives me Christmas traditions. It gives me sincerity. It gives me laughter. Just what more do you want? Yeah. I will echo that 100%. My last gift is going to be gold as well. And I will tell you, I was hoping that as we got that closing shot of them at the door and I saw that wreath, I thought, please let the wreath <laughs> fall one last time. Please let it fall. And it sure enough did. And I thought that is just so nice of them to do that. Right. And to mm -hmm. keep that as sort of a wink and a nod the whole time and end it on a really kind of funny note after they've given you the relationship payoff. And I just thought it was really great. So. Yeah, the continuity was really good with all the bits and the inside jokes and things. Yeah. Yeah. So, bottom line, Jennifer, six gold, zero coal. It is a toothsome turkey, and I am going to make a statement. We have been at okay. this for three years. Mm -hmm. Happy anniversary, Josh. Indeed. This might very well... No, I'm even going to go further. This is my favorite one we have watched. I'm going to say... What? No way. I know no, that's no, a big no. statement. <laughs> that is. And I will tell you why. This, you said, it checks every box. It is heartfelt. It is funny. It is well written. It is well acted. It is perfectly cast. It is one that I would most assuredly watch every single year. I think it, you cannot go wrong with this one. I agree. It's great. It, I won't say it's my favorite. The alley hitting the toy store guy in the face and with the, in the alley. It it was weird. It was a choice. <laughs> yeah, it was a choice. What are we doing? <laughs> but that's a very minor, like you know, if it was the Olympics, like a point zero 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 one deduction. It's still yes. If you're looking to get into this genre, look no further than watching this movie. It's an oldie but a goodie. I'm so glad we watched it. Now we had asked you all for your thoughts on this movie. And we had a couple people respond on Insta. Our listener, Mackie, said, I think that this is the best kind of Christmas movie because I very much enjoy rewatching it all year round. I can never get enough of the witty dialogue and so many of the film's funniest moments. Like when um, the uncle says, wow, he sounds like a bookcase because she was describing the boyfriend. And she's like, he's solid. Da, 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 da. He's like, yeah, that's a piece of furniture. Um, Christina yeah. said that Warren Christie and Brooke Burns set the bar for undeniable chemistry in this movie. And Henry Winkler's signature comedic timing makes it a holiday classic if there ever was one. This is definitely going to be one I watch every year from now on, especially early in the season. Like, really get the Christmas vibes going. Get it going. Yeah, absolutely. Can't go wrong. And that, friends, is another episode of Do You Watch What I Watch? Special thanks, as always, to our friend Nick Schwartz for our theme song and to you for listening and watching. Hey, if you like our podcast, thank you so much for listening or watching. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube and tell a friend. And hey, if you're listening to us on a podcast platform, we'd really love a five-star review. And feel free to write a review as well. We'd also invite you to connect with us on all of our social media channels. You can find more information about that and us on our website at doyouwatchwhatiwatch.com. Hey, next time we are continuing our 12 Pods of Christmas Summer Series. We are going to be watching and chatting about another Hallmark classic. This one involves cats and one of our dear favorites, Kimberly Sustad. So, here is the plot synopsis that we're going to be discussing. After a stray cat adopts Zachary, he meets <laughs> Merrily and realizes the single life is not as fulfilling as he thought it was. We will have much to discuss 
And until then. May your days be merry and bright. We'll see you next time.